less than one five solving inequalities. Um, a lot of teachers look at this and say, oh, it's not that hard. A lot of students really struggle with it, so make sure you know what you're doing here. Uh, we've got two numbers, A and B. There's only three things that can be true. Um, a can equal B. A can be less than B. Or A can be greater than B. Generally speaking, most people equate algebra 1 or 2 with the whole equals concept. Oh, we're solving. We're trying to find something. But life is actually much more along these lines. If you're speeding, you're going over a speed limit. If you're not speeding, you're staying under or equal to a certain speed limit. Um, you're ordering tiles for the floor. You need at least 200 tiles, so you order 250 because you know some will get broken or lost and you want to make sure you have enough. So again, life is generally not perfectly equivalent. You want a few more, you want a few extra. So the best way to learn is to just jump right in. You solve it like a regular equation with one exception, which we'll talk about in a minute. So we add our numbers and subtract our variables, and we get x is greater than 9. Now, are we done? No. Do a quick check. 10 should work. X is greater than 9. It's a good one to guess. 7 times 10 is 70 minus 5 is 65 over here. 6 times 10 is 64 over here. Greater. Check. And notice very close because at 9 they'd be equal. So, quick check. 10 is a nice number to use. 0, 1 are nice numbers to use when it's appropriate. You could have thrown 0 in here and said negative 5 is greater than 4. No, so 0 doesn't work, so it proves it that way too, or it checks it briefly. Um, I'm wrong here. There's actually three ways to show this, and really four, but one of them is a duplicate. So here's one. X is greater than 9. Here's another X is greater than 9 means we're looking at a number line. And we're taking all of this data up here. It's everything up to infinity positive, starting at 9. We always make a dot, and then the question is do we fill it in? Now, it's an open dot because of the greater than. If we had a greater than or equal, we would close the dot. But we don't. Now, that's two ways to show it. I said there's a duplicate way. You'll see this in several places. Instead of the dot, they make this goofy parentheses. We'll talk more about that in a second. Go from there. This is generally not used in higher level math. It's used in some spots. But notice we're going from 9 to infinity, but we're not including 9. So another way to show that is parentheses, 9, infinity parentheses. So this is one way. This is a second way. This is a third way. Goodness gracious, there's a fourth way. Five if you want to include the other way to do a number line. We can do what we call set notation. So make this funky little parentheses, bracket, and we say x Set that. That's what the vertical line means. X is greater than 9. And we close the brackets. If you can make better brackets than me, God bless you. Mine are not good. So there's another way to do it. All mean the same thing. Just you see it labeled differently by different people. I told you inequalities is not that easy. Here's one example why. Lots of people do it in lots of different ways. It doesn't really matter. The Curvy brackets always exist for infinity. The curvy brackets next to the number depend on whether it says less than or less than or equal. Less than or equal is going to give you a square bracket. And I'll show you that in a moment. That's very, very easy to find. Uh, confusing, so watch out for that. Change color here for a little change of pace. Now, so what's one thing to remember is that if you multiply or divide 
by a negative flip the sign and a lot of people just take this you know as writ law, law of God okay yeah whatever you say teach it's what you want me to do I'll do it but let's take a look why because if we solve this equation we can solve it really two very different ways Now you just say whatever teach you told me if I divide my net oh divided my negative, flip the sign. X is less than or equal to negative two. So on the number line it looks like negative two. Fill in the dot. Over here it looks like bracket negative two and it goes to negative infinity. And infinity is always curvy, even though it doesn't really make sense. I guess you can't get to infinity, so because it never technically hits it. I think that's lame. Let's solve it a different way. Let's add 2x to both sides and subtract 4. Nothing says we can't do that. We can do it when we're solving an equation. Over here we have 2x less than or equal to negative 4 because you have to read the variable first. x is less than or equal to. Divide by 2. I'm going to write it up here. Write x first, so the small end is facing the x. Notice it's the same. So this is why we flip the signs when dividing or multiplying by a negative. We've got to change the signs because there's different ways to solve it, and that matches up with the other way to solve it. So this is really the way you should be solving your equation because it doesn't mess with the inequality. But since most people do it this way, we just give you that rule. Multiply or divide by a negative, flip the sign. I would pause the recording at this point, try these two problems. I'm going to go through them real quickly, and I'm going to use as many different ways to label the answer as possible. So now I'll give it a shot. Don't forget to flip. I forgot to check my pre previous problem. I won't forget this. Less than negative 8. Try negative 10. Uh, let's try negative 12. Negative 12 times 0.25 is 1 fourth of negative 12. And negative cancels, so it's 12 over 4 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. Is 7 greater than or equal to 6? Yes. Checks. Less than negative 8 means we're going to negative infinity. Negative 8, but equal, so there. Number line... Negative 8, fill in my dot. Set notation. Y, such that Y is less than or equal to negative 8. What a mess, huh? Let's try the other side. Set notation. Brackets nearly didn't make it. Less than or equal to negative two fifths. Negative infinity. Negative two fifths. Block. Number line. Negative two fifths. Block. There it is. It's going to take a fair amount of practice for those who aren't really used to the inequalities. And I wouldn't be surprised if most of you weren't. They're really not handled well by most Algebra 1 teachers. They kind of glaze over them very quickly.
And guess when you thought things couldn't get more complicated, they do. It's what we call a compound inequality. There's two of them. And just treat it like a regular equation. You just have to do everything three times. All the rules apply. If I were to divide by negative, I need to flip everything. 3 is less than x is less than or equal to 5. Set notation x such that 3 is less than x is less than or equal to 5. My bracket's getting worse by the minute. Um, 3 gets curvy bracket because it's got a less than. 5 gets a square bracket. And number line. I've forgotten some. Hope somebody yells at me. Why didn't you check it? Oh, good point. Let's try four, see if it works. Two times four, eight, plus seven, 15, 13, 15, 17. Works. I'm relatively confident I did that one correctly. So people call this an and problem. What's that mean? That means that it's greater than three and less than five. It's, it's an interval. It's one interval. And it does not go out to infinity. By the way, if I haven't mentioned it, that's an infinity sign. And that's the cool way to draw it. Some people try and do it with the sideways eight, and they always mess it up. So that's hideous. Don't do that. You don't want to do that. Um, so we have an or problem. This one's going to have a number line that just goes off into infinity both ways. So if it doesn't, it means your math teacher messed up. So now this one you break into two. Y is greater than negative one. Let's put negative one here and make an open dot. And let's solve this right here is less than or equal to negative 7. Negative 7, close dot. Negative infinity, comma, negative 7. Union, I think. Negative 1, infinity. Y such that y is greater than negative 1 or y is less than or equal to negative 7. That's it. Takes some time, but it's doable. And I call these the really tough problems. Get some absolute value and equalities. Really got to think. Going to turn it into an and problem, or we're going to turn it into an or problem. I never know. I'm not fluent enough to know where these are going. But I do know I've told you how to do these before. A is less than 4. Negative A is less than 4. We've broken into 2. A is greater than negative 4 because I had to divide by negative 1. Hence the reason I like putting the negative on the left. A is greater than negative 4, A is less than 4. This is an and problem. Because if I number line it, less than 4, dot, greater than negative 4, dot, it's in between. Right. Now, the smart math teacher would give you an or problem now, so you've seen one of both. I don't know if I was that smart when I set this up. It's been a little while. Break it up. 3x minus 12, greater than or equal to 6. Negative 3x minus 12, greater than or equal to 6. I like getting rid of the negative right away and flipping the sign. You don't have to. You can distribute the negative. Going to get the same answer. 3x less than or equal to 6. x less than or equal to 2. Hmm. 
number line. I'm guessing it's going to be an or problem. Uh, 3x greater than or equal to 18. x greater than or equal to 6. Jeez, it's almost like I know what I'm talking about. Fill in the dots. Greater than 6. Fill in the dots. Less than 2. Holy moly. Uh, negative infinity to 2. Whoops. Union. 6 to positive infinity. And x such that x is less than 2 or x is greater than less than or equal to 2, greater than or equal to 6. That's a lot of material. It's going to take some serious practice. Good luck.